As science becomes increasingly interdisciplinary, the Biophysical Society annual meeting continues its long-held reputation for bringing together leading scientists from all over the world who work at the interface of the life, physical, and computational sciences. From the phenomenal city of Philadelphia, this is the Biophysical Society's annual meeting and you're watching Biophysical Society TV. I'm your host, Audrey Godfrey, and we have an incredible week in store. Today, we are focusing on what's new for you. The goal was to put together a program that was exciting uh, for us, as we are right now, but also for uh, younger people that this would be their first meeting. You'll notice many changes at this year's annual gathering. We're sitting down with this year's program chairs and the current BPS president to find out what all you can expect. I've always had good experiences coming here to, to BPS and I'm excited that they're creating space to lift black voices. Plus, we hear about this year's Black in Biophysics Symposium. Sharonda LeBlanc gives a sneak peek at what you can expect straight ahead. And today, we kick off our tour of organizations and institutions blazing new trails in biophysical research and technology. We are focusing on cryo-electron microscopy, showcasing the fascinating new research and what it means for the future of this rapidly expanding field of science. We've got an exciting first day in store and plenty of ways for you to watch. You can always find the latest biophysical TV episodes on the TVs placed throughout the convention center on the in-house channel at several of our partner hotels, on the homepage of the BPS Meeting website, and on our Twitter and YouTube pages. We are so excited to kick off this week in Philadelphia by sitting down with current BPS president, TJ Ha. Dr. Ha has truly made the most of his time as president by creating an exciting new task force and implementing a number of changes that you will notice right here this week. Thank you so much for your time today and for joining us here in studio. Thank you. All right, let's get started. You know, first off, congratulations on a very exciting and successful year. As you take a look back, is there any one thing in particular that stands out and maybe an accomplishment that you're most proud of? So I am most proud of the program committee who put together a most diverse and forward-looking lineup of speakers for the meeting. And they were chaired by Ibrahim Sisse and Elizabeth Villa, uh, who I uh, appointed. Mm -hmm. There was a real privilege for me to choose them, and it was the best decision that I'm most proud of. Like I mentioned, you've created a number of new initiatives, um, specifically a new task force, among other things. Can you describe some of those? Yeah, we had a new task force for new awards, and we created uh, four new uh, awards for the society. And the first one is on computational biophysics, named after Klaus Schulten and Lucy uh, Schulten. And they uh, are the towering figures in the uh, field. And the second uh, new award uh, is uh, for research uh, performed in primarily undergrad uh, institutions. And third uh, new award uh, is for young investigators, uh, new investigators that have been independent for fewer than uh, six years. Finally, uh, we have outstanding doctoral dissertation award. And we have uh, two uh, awards to pick. Uh, one is for uh, candidates within the United States and the other is for candidates from outside the U.S. And as far as this meeting goes, lots of new changes as well. We have our SIMP Select speakers, uh, platform flash talks, lots of different changes. What can attendees expect as they head into this week? So uh, these uh, changes were actually inspired by my attending previous meetings, uh, several experiments run by the subgroups, and uh, new initiatives such as by, uh, Black in Biophysics presidential mm -hmm. symposiums. I, I learned that uh, when we have uh, uh, shorter talks, uh, people pay uh, uh, greater attention, mm. speakers perform better, and we also are allowed, uh, we are able to give uh, more opportunities to our members to present their own work. And uh, that's the goal for the ch behind the changes, to give additional presentation opportunities for the members. And I think uh, uh, you will be able to see uh, the outcome. So even biophysicists might have short attention spans. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, we learned that. Yeah, we learned that. Yeah. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about you and how you became involved in the Biophysical Society. So I was uh, trained as a physicist, so uh, it's not a big exaggeration to say that 
everything I know about biophysics, I learned through the society. So when they asked me to serve on some committees, I, uh, you know, agreed to serve uh, with enthusiasm. And uh, for the young uh, researchers and scientists, uh, you know, my uh, suggestion would be to uh, seek out opportunities to meet uh, new people because uh, your career and life will be shaped by the people you meet, mm -hmm. uh, in mo many cases by random chances and by uh, volunteering to serve on the society uh, duties, you increase your uh, networking opportunities. Absolutely. Well, as you pass the torch and you wrap up your term as president, what are some of your priorities looking ahead, personally? I was really sad that I couldn't uh, take in a lot of science uh, because mm -hmm. of my duties as uh, president uh, in the past couple of meetings. So I look forward to you know, learning more science <laughs> once my term is over. Getting back to the science. That's right. All yeah. right. Dr. Ha, thank you so much for all of your work this, this past year and also for this week. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. In the cutting-edge field of structural biology, the Beijing Frontier Research Center for Biological Structure is pushing forward in several disciplines boosted by new government funding. Among them is cryo-electron microscopy, which uses extremely fast freezing of biological samples to enable 3D visualization of macromolecules such as proteins and viruses to help understand the tiniest mechanisms of human biology. The center is dedicated to elucidation of important biological structures that help decipher the secrets of life. These structures include those of proteins, nucleic acids, complexes, organelles, cells, even tissues and organs, basically at all levels. Seeing is believing. We are hoping to cultivate an environment to encourage scientists from different disciplines uh, to uh, work together. We try to build a center with a world-class discipline on all different uh, aspects of uh, our life. It is a very exciting time for structural biology. New tools, new technologies are emerging to facilitate deciphering of additional structures and complexes. Cryo-electron microscopy is also the focus at the University of Wisconsin, where a group of research scientists are working to provide instrumentation, training, and access to this highly specialized and rapidly expanding field that requires high-level expertise and precision. The Cryo-EM Research Center at UW-Madison is a state-of-the-art Cryo-EM Research Center that supports users from industry, academia, and government labs to do all forms of Cryo-EM that they're interested in. It's a very important facility for us because it gives us a national presence in an emerging area of, of science that cuts across all the boundaries. The things that excite me most are the people and the equipment because bringing those two pieces together really allows us to connect as a community. In my perspective, the future is, is unlimited. There are no boundaries for us. It's really thinking about how we develop these tools to then push the boundaries to answer a whole range of, of biological questions. BPS 2024 is getting a facelift. This year, you may notice some exciting new changes in addition to the incredible slate of speakers and symposia. Your 2024 program chairs, Elizabeth Villa and Ibrahim Cisse, are with us here in studio now to discuss. Thank you both for your time today. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Well, I know you've put a lot of work and planning into the program this year. I want to get started with some of the exciting new offerings that you're most looking forward to. Yeah, no, for both Elizabeth and myself, right, uh, we grew up in the biophysical society. We will come to the meetings in, even when we were graduate students, right? And so uh, the goal was to put together a program that was exciting uh, for us as we are right now, but also for uh, younger people that 
this would be their first meeting uh, coming in. And it was not just us, there was an entire program committee also that, uh, that participated in uh, putting this together. Yeah, so the program has a lot of the staples of the Biophysical Society, including a lot of recommendations from membership. Um, the usual new and notable, future of biophysics, which we're very excited about, but we also try to expand the breadth of what biophysics is, or what we think it's going to become. So we have a lot of, uh, we have the workshops, which are very exciting, uh, with new techniques, and, and what we see the technologies that physics brings to biology going, and then we also have a few exciting new symposia. Yeah, so for the symposia, of course, we have the staples, like covering the broad breadth of the Biophysical Society membership, and uh, so you can have topics that go from intrinsically disordered uh, regions back in transcription all the way to climate change, cancer biophysics. Plant biophysics. Plant biophysics, yes. Really fascinating topics, not those that you typically think of when you think of the world of you know, biophysics. So really impressive. Um, what do you hope that attendees take away from this meeting? Just the amazing breadth of science that biophysics can cover. You can do biophysics in a lot of different ways. Uh, and then that um, there's a new generation of biophysicists coming down the pipeline that are applying physics to biology in completely new ways. For me, the Biophysical Society annual meeting is really a place to make new colleagues, make new friends, meet new collaborators, but also hear great science. So, you know, I encourage, uh, you know, the, the attendees uh, to continue in that tradition, right? Uh, talk to the person uh, next to you, ask them what their, their research is, and uh, also go, go to the symposia. I, approach the speakers so the speakers yeah. really really want to hear back from the from the membership also after after their talks and get people's email yeah. you know get their social media and uh, and uh, continue the discussions yeah. right Absolutely. really take advantage of the networking Absolutely. Yeah. oh my god i know people that i met here when i was a graduate student exactly. and now i meet them again you know yes. And, and you look forward to this every year, right? It's kind of, right. a, regardless of where you are in the, in the <laughs> world, you come back to the Biophysical right. Society meeting because it is home and because yeah. you, you find uh, you know, your, your fellowship with, uh, with your colleagues. Great reunion. All right, final question for you both. You've spent you know, the past year focusing primarily on this meeting and all the content within the program. What are you looking forward to now that all the planning is behind you? Just sit back and enjoy the science. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, yeah, getting back to, to science and uh, for me also, uh, you know, picking up managing directorship in, uh, in my institute uh, in Freiburg uh, means that uh, I'm going to still have my time split between a bit of administrative work and a lot of, uh, you know, focus in science. But, uh, you know, the people from my lab are here also attending the meeting, <laughs> yes, so I have, I have no doubt that we will be covered. Uh, Wonderful. Well, I hope you both can enjoy the fruits of your labor this week, and thank you so much for your time and for all of your work this past year. It's appreciated. Thank you so much. To hear more now about the exciting work that one of this year's meeting chairs is doing, we visited Freiburg, Germany. There, the Max Planck Institute is providing full support for the newly formed Department of Biological Physics, working to discover emergent phenomena in living cells. In the Department of Biological Physics, we are trying to understand the physical phenomena that govern biological processes. I want to understand how genes in our body, in our cells, are turning on and off. I try to understand how cells control the expression level of genes. I try to expand the advanced microscopy into the plant um, as a new model system. We started the Department of Biological Physics here about two years ago. It really is the dream job, right? You are given complete freedom and substantial resources in order to take your research wherever your curiosity will bring you there. I take it to heart that when the Max Planck Society recruits a new director, it's an investment over several decades in the research field. My hope is that the resources that we have here can also become available to the broader biological physics community. Now to our first Symposium Spotlight series. Happening today, the Biophysics of Cancer Symposium. Here now is Candace Tanner.
first to begin, this year we're going to have a very broad program focused on biophysics of cancer. So it's new to the program. And here we're going to have speakers who will talk about different tools in terms of diagnostics to understand mechanisms and to also apply them to different types of model systems mimicking what happens in human disease. I think that we have a very vibrant um, field of cancer biophysicists and probably one of the aspects that we need to focus on is how do we then liaison better with clinicians because we want to make our discoveries more accessible and that may include changing our jargon a bit or being able to talk to them in a way that they can then bring what is needed from their perspective and we just have more of a back and forth to facilitate more discoveries. When I first started in physics, the concept that even physicists could make such inroads into cancer biology was limited to diagnostic techniques or imaging. But now this appreciation that biophysics itself can influence cancer progression and in terms of disease response, in terms of therapeutics and so forth, it, it opens up in terms of a wider range of biophysicists in terms of what we bring to the table. I hope that because it's now housed at the Biophysical Society, that people coming by could say, my expertise is needed. And even if I didn't think that I could work in the biophysics of cancer, now I could do something. And I really think that this is a good way of being able to move towards those challenges that I discussed earlier. So please come check us out. It's right before the Super Bowl. You can get some good science and go support your team. And please make sure and show up. So thanks again. Back now to our focus of cryo-electron microscopy. The Simons Electron Microscopy Center stands at the forefront of groundbreaking research. With cutting edge technology and a team of dedicated experts, the center plays a pivotal role in advancing our understanding of biological structures at the molecular level. The Simon Electron Microscopy Center is one of the largest cryo-electron microscopy laboratories in the world. It provides services to users or to scientists that are interested in structural biology. We can help them uh, solve the structural proteins. We can help them investigate the cellular landscape uh, at the molecular level. The Simon's Electron Microscopy Center is a leader in the field of biophysics and biotechnology. The mission of the center is to build a community of researchers to use cryom techniques to uncover molecular and cellular structures. We are equipped with over 14 cryo-electron microscopes between uh, high-end cryotransmission electron microscopes and focused ion beam microscopes. The team at the Simons Electron Microscopy Center is, I think, its greatest strength. Um, we have these amazing, beautiful instruments, uh, but it's really the staff that lets us do the kind of work that we do. Uh, we have people with a broad range of experience. We have engineers, we have chemists, we have physicists and biologists, and that allows us to sort of tackle any problem we might come across. The focus of the center is preparing the stage for tomorrow. As we are kicking off celebrating Black History Month, the Biophysical Society, too, is highlighting black biophysicists and celebrating diversity with this year's presidential symposium. Sharonda LeBlanc is sitting down with us in studio now with a preview. Good morning. Thanks for your time today. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I want to get started with your own personal perspective and ask you the question, what is it like to be a black biophysicist? Well, here it's starting to feel pretty good. Um, I, I came last year to this meeting and that was the first time that they did the Black and Biophysics Symposium, which I'm, I'm speaking at on Sunday. And it was an amazing experience. You could feel the energy in the room and there were several speakers there who, that was their first platform talk. Um, oh, wow. And, and, and being highlighted just created a, a space in order to be uh, represented and, and seen. And that's what I felt there. It came at a time when I needed to see that. I was, I was uh, struggling a little bit in my faculty position and um, I felt hope after seeing that. You feel very supported by the Biophysical Society. Yeah, I do, right. It's, it's, it's a great community of scientists. 
Wonderful. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your science. What can you tell us? I am a single molecule biophysicist. Uh, okay. So I attach little fluorescent probes to proteins and DNA and I monitor how they interact. Um, so we're really interested in mechanistic details, understanding how um, proteins drive uh, biological pathways forward. Uh, a lot of proteins are what are called ATPases. They use a, a molecule called ATP to change shape. Um, and whenever they change shape, they uh, turn on and off interactions. What do you hope your research will be used for? What kinds of real world applications? Hopefully therapeutics. A lot of times okay. we're thinking about designing single molecule fluorescence based assays in order to challenge them with um, inhibitors. So we want to look for ways to inhibit protein activity in a lot of cases. What are you most looking forward to this week? So I'm definitely looking forward to my talk on Sunday. Um, the current president of BPS is, uh, is a pioneer of my field, uh, TJ Ha, and I'm, I'm very excited that he invited me to speak in the President's Symposium. And I'm looking forward to that and also connecting with colleagues. I've already run in a bunch of, uh, to a bunch of colleagues that are in the single molecule community. Uh, some of us are having lunch, so it's, it's always an exciting time to, to, get, um, to get together. Do you have any final words or any pieces of advice for maybe an African American who's just coming into this society who might be looking up to you as a role model? So I, I've always had good experiences coming here to, to BPS and I'm excited that they're creating space to lift black voices and um, I would recommend anyone here to just reach out to people. I mean, I think folks in the society are very approachable. Um, I always just bump into people and they're always willing to share their knowledge. You know, I emailed some data to uh, some, some key people in the field before I came here and you know those people are always willing to, to look at your work and, and to give you guidance. Wonderful. All right, well thank you so much for your time today. Have a great week. All right, thank you. You too. We've heard from our program chairs, president, and symposium leaders about why they are looking forward to this week. Now we want to hear from you. We head to the convention floor to talk with attendees about what you are hoping to gain this week. I'm looking to meet uh, new people, new researchers, and uh, explore all of the uh, different uh, um, topics that uh, the Biophysical Society covers and uh, especially for uh, cryo-EM and structural biology, which is my uh, interest. I, mean, I just started my PhD, so this is my uh, first time around. I'm really hoping to meet people in the theory and computation subgroup meeting um, and meet people in the um, computational physics and chemistry space. I focus on small molecule drug design and biologics, so this is my first time at an event like this, so I'm really excited to just Talk to people, meet people. I've already met a few people. It's just been really, really fun. I'm working in uh, the nanotechnology field, so with uh, protein nanopores, and this is uh, just like the perfect moment actually to meet like all the researchers involved in this uh, um, field of research. Also to present my own research and, and data because I'm a, I'm a PI. So that was exciting because at first I was coming as a postdoctoral researcher and PhD student. And now I'm bringing my own students, so uh, wonderful transition, yes. I just want to explore options because the uh, special thing about this meeting is like not only we can have opportunity to meet the faculty members, but also the industries are coming. So that's my main motivation to be here. I mean, such a big event is, of course, the biggest event in the world in the field of uh, biology, biophysics. I just want to see what it's like to meet a lot of people, to connect with a lot of people, and also I got the opportunity to present my research. So the real question is, how oh, couldn't I be here? We wrap up today at the Molecular Imaging Innovations Institute. The team is dedicated to the development of imaging probes and technologies that enable the Institute to visualize disease and therapeutics at multi-scale levels. Let's see how the Institute's collaborative environment serves as a nexus for preclinical and clinical translational programs. The mission of the Molecular Imaging Innovations Institute, MI3, is to uh, develop, implement, and translate a wide variety of uh, probes or chemical agents for improving the diagnosis of disease and the treatment of patients. I think our institute has many talented um, researchers with a diverse background who will shape the future 
uh, imaging science, uh, clinical radiology practice, and medicine. This is such a multidisciplinary field encompassing chemistry, and physics, and biology, and that creates the opportunity to benefit from the knowledge uh, leaps that are taking place across all these disciplines. So it's an incredibly dynamic field where one day is never like the day before. The outcome of all of this is to uh, improve patient care and to have better tools to answer a lot of the questions that often arise in the care of the patient. Remarkable work being conducted by all of our featured institutions and research centers today. Thank you so much for joining us here on Biophysical Society TV on this first day in Philly. If you missed any portion of today's episode, remember you can find the latest Biophysical Society TV episodes on the TVs placed throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the homepage of the BPS meeting website, and on our Twitter and YouTube pages. Thank you so much for your time today. We will see you right back here tomorrow for another fascinating day of Biophysical Society TV. Go have a great one.